Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to our Lord's house on this Septuagesima Sunday. The Sunday approximately 70 days in advance of Easter. You know, in the Gospel of Luke, Luke tells of the ministry of Jesus. And uh, for much of the first part of his book, it's located in, in the northern part of, of the area. And then there comes a point when Luke says that Jesus turned his face toward Jerusalem. And from that moment on, the story progresses and he draws ever closer uh, to, his, uh, to his glory to be revealed in the cross of Calvary and, of course, to Easter morning. And I feel like today in the church, Septuagesima Sunday, uh, we, we turn toward Holy Week and to Good Friday and, of course, to Easter. And that will be our journey for here, from here on out. The next three weeks, the Jesima Sundays, the focus is certainly on His Word, uh, on grace, uh, uh, and then uh, Ash Wednesday. And we begin our earnest through the season of Lent as well. But for today, the first then the three-week season of, of pre-Lent, if you will. During this time, we, uh, we have now bid farewell to the Alleluias for a while. And as the season progresses, other things would normally drop out of the liturgy. Since we're using kind of an abbreviated form, uh, we'll lose a little bit of that this year, but uh, there will be no triple hallelujah before the gospel uh, this morning. Otherwise, the service is as outlined in your bulletin. And we begin this morning with the first three verses of hymn 761, Rock of Ages, Cleft for Me. with which I have ever offended you, 
and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. And I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God to you, and in the stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue by praying responsibly Psalm 95. Psalm 95. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as at Meribah, as on the day at Massah in the wilderness, when your fathers put me to the test and put me to the proof, though they had seen my work. For forty years I loathed that generation and said, they are a people who go astray in their heart, and they have not known my ways. Therefore I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Therefore the people quarreled with Moses and said, 
Give us water to drink. And Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water. And the people grumbled against Moses and said, Why did you bring us up out of Egypt? To kill us and our children and our livestock with thirst? So Moses cried to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. And the Lord said to Moses, Pass on before the people, taking with you some of the elders of Israel, and take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile, and go. Behold, I will stand before you there on the rock at Horeb, and you shall strike the rock, and water shall come out of it, and the people will drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. And he called the name of the place Massa and Meribah because of the quarreling of the people of Israel and because they tested the Lord by saying, Is the Lord among us or not? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from 1 Corinthians chapters 9 and 10. Do you not know that in a race all the runners compete, but only one receives the prize? So run, that you may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. So I do not run aimlessly. I do not box as one beating the air, but I discipline my body and keep it under control lest after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. I want you to know, brothers, that our fathers were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea, and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and all ate the same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was Christ. Nevertheless, with most of them God was not pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand for the reading of the gospel. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord, O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my pleas for mercy. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness that you may be feared. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 20th chapter. saying, 
These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat? But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for Daenerys? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last worker as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or do you begrudge my generosity? So the last will be first, and the first last. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
wasn't fair, was it? Try what we see happen in our gospel reading for today. Try that at your place of employment, or even try it at home with your kids. Those who do the least got as much as those who did the most. And as much as everybody else, for that matter. And no, it doesn't seem quite right to us. And uh, it might even plant the seed in our old Adam's thoughts that maybe it's just better to come into God's kingdom late rather than early. So that we can we can enjoy life standing idly by. And following Christ entails self-denial and sacrifice. It requires discipline. But look. This story is not about how to run a business or to manage a vineyard, a farm, or any other type of business. It's not a story about how to run a country either. It is not about how we should reward workers or how we should expect to be rewarded. It is a kingdom parable. It's about the kingdom of heaven. It's about what God's reign and rule looks like. And about how he operates in his kingdom. And when it comes to the kingdom of heaven, a kingdom governed by a loving, gracious, and merciful God, well, you can pretty much throw whatever we think right out the window. Because what God did for you and for me, it makes no sense to our selfish, self-absorbed little brains. It makes no sense what he did, what he does, what he will do isn't fair and it isn't right in our sinful minds. For he takes our sin and shame and guilt and filth and he gives his own righteousness. He makes us. He and the church gives us new birth. Gives us a birth of above. He washes us. He feeds us. He cares for us. He comforts us. He rebukes us. He disciplines us. He tests us. He cares for us in this incredible way. Though we deserve nothing. We haven't worked all day. We haven't labored for 12 hours in his kingdom to work to learn or to earn or merit anything. We actually deserve even worse than nothing. You confessed it just a few moments ago. We deserve temporal and eternal punishment. And, and what about all those workers? that the master finds at the third and the sixth and the ninth and the eleventh hour. Where were they? As we hear the story, the master goes out several times 
And it seems that every time he sends everyone available out into the harvest. So where are the rest of the workers? Sleeping in? Distracted by other things in this world? We're not told. Were they, were they chasing after other masters or opportunities or ideas? Or were they just plain idle? Doing what they darn well pleased instead of what they should have been doing. Look, there doesn't seem to be a single laborer that God doesn't want to join in his harvest. There's not a single one that he wouldn't send into the field so that he could reward them as well. So that he can give to each and every one of them what someone else deserves. His son. It's a mind-blowingly gracious kind of story. And I would suggest to you that it is so mind-blowingly gracious, it's hard for us to even appreciate it. It seems so unfair, unright. So, so now we must pause for a moment and uh, take a look at our own lives. Measure up how we do. Are we there bright and early in the morning? And do we work hard all day, never pausing to complain about those no-good schlubs that are showing up late? Worried that they might get as much as we do? Do we work tirelessly in the Lord's vineyard? Just think. Just think for a moment about some of your thoughts and some of your words this last week or maybe the last month. Have they always been charitable? Have you always gone the extra mile to protect others' reputation? And were your thoughts and words always pure, without spot or blemish? And remember, remember folks, God demands perfection. Not the best we can do at the moment. Not as good as we feel like being at any time. No, he demands perfection. He is holy. And without sin. And if we are holy and without sin, then the promise of heaven is ours. But if we sin, well, then the natural consequences would be an eternity in hell, separated from him, suffering both now and in eternity. Folks, that's what we've earned with our lives. And if we start counting how good we've been, or even how we've worked harder or been better than others, then we are like those that come in last and grumble about the Master. We're like Old Testament Israel, who, who accused, what, what are you doing, Moses? What are you thinking? What, you brought us out here to die from thirst? sound like a bunch of spoiled brats, don't they? So, what are we going to do about this? What are we going to do about our sin? If heaven is performance-based, folks, where do you stand? Where do I stand? Well, the answer isn't that hard, actually. We stand under the cross. We stand sheltered by the outstretched arms of a Savior who willingly shed his blood, who laid down his life for you. He is the one who labored all day. He is the one who was born the heat of the day. He is the only one to live the life of perfection that God rightly demands and expects. We stand there, washed in the blood of the Lamb, our robes made white in His perfection.
perfect holiness and sacrifice. We stand underneath the glorious umbrella of God's grace, His unfathomable grace toward all mankind. And there we are shielded from what we deserve. We're shielded by what Christ did. Living a perfect life of obedience for all. And all of this, all that we receive from God is gift without any merit or worthiness in us. It's all gift, graciously provided by Him. It's like water from a rock when it was needed. Like his word, which is given to us to create and sustain and nurture life-saving faith. It's water and blood and body and words of forgiveness spoken by his called and ordained servant. We are truly saved by grace. Out of the goodness of God's gracious will. It's all gift. We get what Jesus deserves. And he got what we deserve. It wasn't fair. And it's not right. And thanks be to God for that. It was, it is the blessed exchange. And that's his kingdom. And that's life in his kingdom. For we are his children by grace through spirit created faith. All gift. All gift. O oh Lord, Thank you for the denarius of forgiveness, life, and salvation you have given us, me and these thy children. We have certainly not deserved it, and yet you died to give these precious gifts to us. Thank you, dear Father, for sending your Son, and thank you, Holy Spirit, for giving us the hands of faith to cling to the one who was perfect and pleasing to the Father. By him we are saved. Amen. We stand for prayer. This morning, as we lift our prayers and petitions before God's throne of grace, uh, we want to remember especially uh, Betty Ford and Brenda and the rest of the family. Uh, yesterday, shortly after lunch, uh, Betty took a fall uh, at home here in Bunker Hill. Um, she must have uh, taken quite a blow to the head. She was initially treated in Staunton. They transferred her up to St. John's in Springfield. Um, they, uh, they, did, uh, they did some surgery late last night to try to relieve some of the pressure uh, on her brain. Uh, when I left the hospital last night, she was in intensive care, uh, extremely sedated, uh, and quite frankly, the prognosis doesn't look very good. At this point, we're probably praying for a miracle or that he would grant her a peaceful end. But we certainly remember uh, Betty and Brenda in our prayers this morning. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. For the Holy Church, that all who have been called into the vineyard of the Lord would recognize their unworthiness for such a gracious gift, rejoice in the salvation they have in Christ, and remain steadfast in the word. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
for all pastors in Christ, that they would gladly preach the saving gospel to all, not counting the cost, and not for their own glory or the praise of men, but for Christ's glory alone. For all other church workers, that all they do would be in service to this same saving gospel. And for an increase in these vocations, that the Lord of the harvest would use his labors as his blessed instruments in bringing sinners into the vineyard of his redemption and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our congregation, that we would love one another as Christ has loved us. Give generously to support the ministry here and abroad. Pray for our enemies. Put away all earthly grumbling and bask in the glorious provisions our Lord lavishly bestows on us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the most vulnerable among us, especially the unborn and elderly, that we would cherish life from the womb to the grave, seeking to care for them to the best of our ability, and that a culture of life would be embraced by more and more in our society until it becomes the norm. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all the nations of the world, that justice, peace, and the common good of all would be the goal of all those in and under authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all those suffering or recovering from illness, for those who are sad and sorrowful, for those suffering from broken relationships or financial distress, for those to whom death draws near, and for those who are grieving, that Christ would be their health in sickness, their joy in sorrow, and their life even in death. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the gift of new life about to be given to Kate and Jay Holly, we give thanks. And we ask that the Lord of all would keep mother and baby safe during the process of delivery, and that he would make her one of his by the washing of holy baptism. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who come to the table of our Lord this day, that they would receive the very body and blood of Jesus in repentance and faith, and to their abundant blessing, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the faithful who have gone before us and enjoy heavenly bliss, let us give thanks and praise, that we may be brought to share with them the feast of joy that never ends, in the eternal vineyard of our Lord, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. 
This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
blood of Christ shed for you. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in both body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace and joy. Amen. We stand. O oh God, O oh give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Seven. 
785. We praise you, O God. Number 785. We'll be singing verses 2 and 3. God's blessings to all of you. 